right, everybody, get your emotional support photo card and buckle up because today I'm going to be talking about the most taboo, but like in your face topic about photo card collecting, and that is money. Everybody, welcome back to Just Shy. I am Shy, your favorite, probably, mathematical girly, the person, not the adjective, and it's ET's day! Yay! <laughs> I'm literally so excited. I have been sick all week and I didn't know if I was going to be able to make this video and I still, as I'm filming this, don't know if I'm going to be able to get it up in time, but I am going to do my darndest. So if you see this on actual 1024 in the US, not Korea, <laughs> please, please congratulate Editing Shy because she poured her heart out. She ate down to get this video up. Okay? Okay. But yes, today, today, today is 80s day. And as an 18 who collects a fair bit of 80s, I wanted to do something special. And <laughs> do you ever just like have an idea in your brain and it just won't leave and you just have to do it. Uh, yeah, my intrusive thoughts. One, so we are going to go through my entire 80s collection and we are gonna quantify the absolute hell out of it. Okay, you're by the end of this video, if you happen to stay till the end, you don't have to skip to the parts you want to see. Ain't nobody gonna force you, Sabrina. No one, no one. But by the end of this video, if you watch the whole thing, you will know exactly how many AT's photo cards I own, how much I have spent in literal dollars and cents. And I do have receipts that Editing Shy is going to have to go through. It's going to be a pain. You're going to know how much my binders weigh, <laughs> like the weight of all of this physically, like anything that can be quantified will be quantified. Why? Because I love numbers and it's AT's day and we are merging my interests together. So I also asked you guys really late last night before I was all like doped up on cold medicine and passed out. I asked you guys on my Instagram to submit some questions. So I'll also be answering those. I just asked you to submit it either about me personally or about ATs since it is ATs day. So I will also be answering all those questions and also one question that I got a comment on on I think my last video or a couple videos back. I don't know. I don't keep track. But yes, I'm going to answer everything. So this is gonna be a long one. Let's get into it. All right, so we are gonna start out with the queen herself, the one who started it all with Miss Treasure Era. So Treasure Era had all to zero, zero to one, one to all, all to action, and then action to answer. Did y'all get all that? <laughs> People get confused. I got it down pat. I've been here for a long time, not a good time. <laughs> but yes. So I do have Treasure Era. I don't want to say complete because of my recent decision <laughs> to collect some more things. Um, the Treasure Era is the only era where the pre-order benefits are stored with the album cards. And that is simply because there was, there was only the one. There was only the one. <laughs> so, you know, where I'll... It seemed kind of frivolous to have a bit a binder just for these few cards. So <laughs> for the longest time, I only collected my top three members of the ATs, which was Hong Joon, Sunny, and Jong Ho for the pre-order benefits. Um, but I have since started to kind of back collect. I think I'm actually done with these two sets but I have not like reorganized them into OG8 but I will do that before the end of the year and we do that final flip through um but yeah I've also been working on getting first press for <laughs> this one because if you don't know 
the first press cards had square corners and then second press cards had rounded corners both are valid but yeah I just want them all to match and since I have more first press than second then I would just like to do that but that's really a truly a low priority thing <laughs> same thing with the Z set and then we had these MMT cards, which I think are so cute. To this day, this son is one of my favorite sons. Like this look is my favorite Sonny look he has ever done. Okay, unmatched. Pie chart son is the best son. I will die on that hill. But <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've decided that I wanted to go and back collect all of the MMT pops. So I've been working on that. But yes. Then we get into Fever Era, which had Fever 1, 2, 3, and Fever Epilogue. So this is where I actually started collecting. Well, where I started buying the albums, I did actually start collecting from Treasure Epilogue, but this is where I started like buying the albums and I actually pre-ordered. This was the first album that I pre-ordered. So this era is super, super special to me. Um... I think it was the first era that I decided to collect OT8 of the album cards because before I was really just going to collect my top three <laughs> for everything and be done. Um, you see how well that went for me, truly, but... <laughs> And then we get into Fever 2 where we didn't have Mingi and like we were just scared. We were all so scared. That is the sentiment of Fever 2 era. We were, you know, we were happy because like Boom Noria San, but like also we were so scared for Mingi. <laughs> and this is when um, the like cards equaled up to like member pages and I still refuse to take this Mingi fan page out. I will never do it. You cannot make me. But then Fever 3 came along and we had Mingi back. Has this been crooked? I don't know. I'm sorry. We have so much to go through. <laughs> Fever 3 came. Mingi came back. All was well in Apeny land. We got these gorgeous cards. But then like the onslaught of pops was a lot. Little did we know. This was the only gonna go up from here and then fever epilogue which I deadass ignored I did not collect fever epilogue in era <laughs> um I waited until like after everything was over for months and then I went and I back collected it which was kind of a pain back then it is even more of a pain now like I can't imagine y'all struggling through now but I wish you all the best these are all group cards from the platform version that they had like re-released that had different like the image was the same but like the printing was different for the photo cards and so mm, they're just back there but yeah so this was treasure and fever era album cards And then we go into the onslaught of Fever Era Pobs, but I will answer this first question. So it says, how many ATs Polas do you own? So fun fact, I hate, I hate Polas. I hate them. <laughs> I just think they're dark and like low quality. And like we, we have the technology. I don't know. I don't know why we still insist on this. But to answer that, I own two. One I won, one of which was sold to me at a very, very, very cheap price. <laughs> Um, simply because she wanted to get rid of it and it was Hong Joon. The one that I won was Zhong O and I love that Polaroid so much because it's Zhong O. And then of course I took the one from my friend who was downsizing Hong Joon and I absolutely love it. It is him and his, uh, Wave Illusion hair color, the red, which is my favorite hair color on Hong Joon. So had to have it, had to have it. But yes, Fever Pops. So <laughs> for Fever 1, I only collected a few. This is merch, by the way. This is merch. This isn't just random stickers. This is actual merch. <laughs> so technically should be in the merch binder, but like I like it as the opening page to this. So I swear to God, it looks crooked no matter where I put it. I'm sorry if this is crooked. Just, I don't know, tilt your head. <laughs> That's my solution to everything. So I didn't collect that many sets for Fever 1. I think we only had, there were seven fan signs and then just like, maybe three or four 
pre-order benefits so there weren't even that many sets to collect <laughs> but I did do a few OT8 sets and then I collected my top three for absolutely everything except for Tokopedia I cannot get my hands on that for anything like just truly just truly cannot so no but yeah fever one when Hong Jun had blue hair and then for fever two again I was in my minky feels, we all were, and so I was like, I don't know what we're gonna do if we lose Mingi. You don't understand. Like back in the days, if a group lost a member, it was like a really high chance that like they would just disband. It was <laughs> it was the wild, wild west. Now so you know, members leave their group, but they're like still in the group or they leave the company, but they're still in their group. Like we have a lot more flexibility, but I was so scared for ATs. I bought everything and I do mean everything. I bought OT8 everything. Um, we didn't have Mingi, but I'm still going to call it OT8 because I will not exclude him and you can't make me. So um, yeah, I have every single Fever 2 pop. I have every single one. I bought every single one directly from the stores. <laughs> I spent so much money. <laughs> How I afforded this as a broke college kid, I will never know. Like, I was there and even still I don't know how I made this happen like was I living on like oxygen and dreams <laughs> um so I recently moved the like fever 2 was the first era we had unit cards I recently moved those to my unit card binder I'm thinking about moving these as well because they're bookmarks and I, I don't want to say I hate them. <laughs> I don't want to say that, but like, I don't love it. <laughs> I don't love it, but I did buy, I did buy everything. So yeah, this is, this is all fever too. They're all labeled if you want to know what they are. It says, hello, shy. How old are you? I don't believe you are old. Um, I am old. To answer that, old, old, old enough. I'm older than you, okay? No matter how old you are when you're watching this video, just know I'm older than you, okay? <laughs> in spirit <laughs> and probably in actuality. Um, I don't disclose my age, not because like I'm ashamed of my age or like whatever. Uh, I just don't like giving people information that they don't need to know. Why you need to know? <laughs> Old enough, okay? I could have a mortgage. I'm a mortgage teeny. All you need to know. <laughs> I swear, I'm so much sometimes. How long have you been an a teeny? So... I say that, like, I started my Athene dumbness in Hala Hala era. However, again, I didn't start collecting them until Fever Part 1. Um, well, a little bit before Fever Part 1, really, Treasure Epilogue-ish, because I bought, like, a metric ton of albums. It's on my channel somewhere. Not that I encourage you to go back that far. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> oh, dear God. We're in Fever 3 now, where Song Hwa had pink hair, and this did cause problems. <laughs> this did cause problems. This whole page just came out while I was flipping it. How? Song Hwa having pink hair still causes problems to this day, like, just to be so for real. Um, so, yeah, I discovered ATs through Hala Hala. It was like recommended on my YouTube. Before that, I was just an XOL, living my best XOL life. <laughs> I still love XO. I love XO so much. Um, and then like, again, Hala Hala got recommended to me and I was like, oh, I really just like the outfits. I love a good monochromatic look. All black, all white like I just oh I love it chef's kiss so I was like oh what are these dudes doing in all black I honestly thought they were a dance crew I didn't know like they were like a full-blown group and so I watched Hala Hala and I was obsessed I was obsessed <laughs> I'm still kind of obsessed with Hala Hala to this day like it's still in like my top five AT songs of all times but yeah so found Hala Hala, was obsessed, and then like 
went into their discography more because I kept like going back and replaying that song on YouTube. So of course, YouTube's like, oh, so you like ATs? And so they like started recommending me more of ATs' discography and I found Queen Wonderland. Like, how can you not stand after like Wonderland? <laughs> Um, and then like fever epilogue and, you know, we was going by hajang like a thunder and I was like, well, guess I'm in it. And then, you know, here I am, <laughs> here I am. So technically since EP two, but not collecting until fever one, cause I never collected EXO. So I didn't even know that like collecting and like people buying physical albums <laughs> was a thing. <laughs> Like, I was not in it. I didn't know anything about it. But, like, the more K-pop stuff I started to watch, then I, you know, got recommended more K-pop-y stuff. And so then Miss Shao Zenil, Miss Katie, popped up. And I was like, what does this girl mean? I'm pretty sure she unboxed uh, the 80s albums. And I also watched her unbox the Super M albums because around that time was also when Super M was formed. And then they had the Super M at the Target. And I was like, this girl's going to Target and getting albums? Like what? I didn't know that was a thing. The spiral that I have had since Katie. <laughs> Blame her for everything. Had I not seen her unbox those Super M albums, like I would not be here today. I would not be here today. So <laughs> yeah. After I found out that collecting was a thing, I still didn't really, like, understand it. I didn't get it. Um, and I'm pretty sure I had beef with K-pop stickers for, like, the longest time. Because I was like, what am I supposed to do with these stickers? Deco. Deco. I did not get it. I didn't get it. Okay? <laughs> I truly, truly, truly learned through posting on my channel and, like, watching others. And, like, I'm so I'm so deep in the sauce now. Like, if that's not obvious so deep in the sauce so lost in the sauce but yeah <laughs> the love that I had for this card when it came out I mean I still obviously love it like this was one of the very first pink hong junes this mm, mm, <laughs> I still love it I still love it oh he's so pretty he's so pretty and I love him <laughs> anyway so yeah, I have been in a e for about five years now. I didn't get the first membership kit, but I did get the second one, if that's any kind of anything. <laughs> but honestly, I don't think that really matters. Like when you find a group, like when you found your group, you found your group and like it'll feel like home immediately. And I love ATs for that. <laughs> But yeah, that was all the fever pops. Good God. I know this binder is about to weigh the most. She is so heavy. Okay, and then after Miss Treasure Era and Miss Fever Era, we have the World Era. <laughs> AKA the ruiner of a teeny spirits, like collecting the world era. Oh, oh, if you're doing it now, I applaud you. I applaud you so hard. But yeah, so let's get into this. Oh, Lord. Okay, so we had EP1 movement, which Gorilla, Gorilla. She was a game changer, okay? That was like a pretty big sound shift for ATs. I mean, ATs sounds like ATs, like always, because Hong Joon makes everything and he is a musical genius, like I'm convinced. But <laughs> before then, like ATs had a somewhat not as like heavy metal sound and like Gorilla came out the gates. Okay, they, they put Gorilla out with their full chest. And I was like, damn, okay, <laughs> this is where we're going. So I feel like ATs's music, whereas like in Treasure and Fever, we would get, you know, a ballad as a title track, or we would get, you know, Illusion as a title track, things that were a bit softer. I feel like we had no softness. We we didn't have not nary a softness for a title track in here. Like, holla holla? That's intense. She was intense. 
just songs that like start and like it was it's an experience by the time that it ends truly and I love that I love that I feel like they really leaned into their um you know heavier image their darker image whereas before they would try to like kind of pull back a bit to like appease the the Korean audience where they like you know ballads and softer sounds lighter concepts this by this point they're like okay no <laughs> we gonna do us and whoever likes us likes us like they they kind of were like I don't give you know a care I don't give a care <laughs> I'll try not to curse I'll try I'll try <laughs> but then we get to Miss Outlaw Miss Bouncy this was the first time I have ever struggled to collect album cards pops that's <laughs> you know but this was the first time that I was like oh god these album cards might be the death of me like th this was the first time I was a little bit fearful <laughs> I did it but like at what cost to my mental health <laughs> truly <laughs> truly 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 this was also like one of the first times that I had to really go back to setting up for ATs because it wasn't just like a perfect nine pocket. Like I really had to like put some thought into how these cards were going to look and everything like that. And like, yeah, so we're still an outlaw. We're still here. We're only the Yosang. They really did a lot. They also did two different color backs for digi packs. Uh, <laughs> that was a struggle. <laughs> I feel like I'm complaining a lot. I love ATs. I, sh I should just interject with, I love ATs so much. <laughs> and then we have what is, I think, my favorite era to date. For the longest time, it was EP2, but I think Will has like officially taken over as my favorite 80s era. I just love every single song on this album so much. I loved the concept. Hong Jun, why are you crooked? That's a problem for later. That's a problem for later. The concepts were so beautiful. The stages were so beautiful. Like we got unit songs. We got a Jongo solo song. I just can't imagine anything better. Like <laughs> this was just peak shy 80s-ness for me like I just love this era so much the cards weren't too much like I miss I miss Miss William I miss Miss William so much <laughs> we had cute Polaroids cute stick look at this cute green haired Yosang tell me this isn't a great era you can't you really can't we had all the members everybody was healthy like it was just so good it was just so good and that was the end of the world era album cards so glad to this day that they did not have an epilogue because i don't know where i was gonna put it just truly don't know where i was gonna put it everybody say hey to miss myrna so this is where i put all of my the world era pre-order benefits lucky draws fan signs all of that goodness this binder is so full um i this is only ot8 sets as well <laughs> i think i think i moved everything that was not an ot8 set out of here so i think it's just ot8 sets for just those four albums i think because, yeah, we had Movement, and then Halazia, and then Outlaw, and then Will. So, yeah, just four, four albums worth of OT8 sets. <laughs> this binder's so full. Next question is, how many photo cards do you have in total from every group? I don't know. I did count them once, but obviously I have accumulated more photo cards since then. So, I don't... I don't know. <laughs> By the end of this video, you'll know how many Aunties cards I have. But like, yeah, I'm not going to count all the other people today. We might do that in the future. But like, counting them all the first time was backbreaking editing labor. And this is already going to be backbreaking editing labor. <laughs> I don't want to add more on to that. 
Okay, I'm still recovering. I, yesterday, was literally on the verge of death. Like, I did not get out of bed all day. Um, as you may or may not know, my immune system is complete and utter garbage. I get sick at the drop of a hat. Um, even, like, I could just look at the hat dropping and be sick. Anytime I go outside, it's basically guaranteed that I'll have a fever. Usually low grade. Um... If I stay out for longer periods, definitely high grade. I frequently get walking pneumonia, which is like baby pneumonia, but like can still kill you. <laughs> um, twice I've had actual pneumonia and barely survived. I barely survived COVID when I got that. Like if there's an illness out there, I will get it. I will get it. I will have it and I will almost die from it. So... <laughs> We're taking it easy on Sick Shy for the time being. This is already going to be so much. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this up on time. I'm really going to do my best, but yeah. So I don't know how many photo cards I have in total, but you will know how many AT's photo cards I have by the end of this video. Or you could just skip to that part. Either way. Either way, Samantha, nobody's gonna force you. Oh, that's sweet. This next person says, I love you. That's not a question. Or is it? Like, I love you? <laughs> In which case, I'm not, I'm not sure how to answer that. I can't. Do you? <laughs> but if it's a statement, I love you too. Hey, thank you. How sweet. So this person asked, how long do you see yourself still collecting? What do you enjoy the most and the least? So I will be collecting ATs until ATs decides they no longer want to be ATs. And how long that is, is honestly up to them. <laughs> I'm here until the very bitter end for my babies. I love them so much. I will never stop collecting them if they still put out stuff. Um, you know, the standard has really changed. It used to be that like groups would promote until their slave contract was up, which was like eight to 10 years, which is insane. So glad that's not a thing. Or was it like 10 to 15 years? It, either way, either way. <laughs> um, it used to be that they would promote until their slave contract is up and then they would pretty much disband after that or become inactive, effectively disbanding themselves. Um, but I don't feel like that's really the case anymore. Like the, the industry has changed quite a lot, just even in the time that I've been a part of it. Like it is almost un unrecognizable. Like idols having phones, <laughs> I remember wasn't really a thing. <laughs> Um, and now it'd be like unimaginable for idols to not have phones because they need to film like TikToks and like social media content and they need to do lives from every which place on the globe. So like the landscape for K-pop has changed so much that like ATs might like go longer without making comebacks, but I don't know if they will truly disband, um, which is great. I love them. <laughs> I love them so much. And like, if they, you know, want to settle down and just do an album like once every three, four years, I'll be here. I'll be here. Maybe I'll finally have time to back collect. <laughs> but yeah, so I don't see like a definite like stop period like, oh, on January 16th of 2038, I will definitely like no longer be collecting. Or anything like that. Really just is up to ATs. They could disband tomorrow. They could stay together forever. Or I could die first. Because again, my health is poor. So uh, the answer to that is until I die or until ATs disbands. One of the two. Whichever happens first. So next up for album cards and pobs actually is Golden Hour Era. So I only have Golden Hour Part 1 in here. It's rumored that Golden Hour Part 2 will be coming soon. It still hasn't been announced as of me filming this video. But this era is also stored with the album cards and the pobs together simply because I don't want no more binders. I have 13 binders. 
14 binders. <laughs> I forgot one. <laughs> I, I can't be out here. So as, as many things as I can keep consolidated at once, I'm gonna. But yes, so this is golden hour, what I have finished so far, which honestly is like a concerningly little amount, <laughs> but <laughs> we're working on it. We're working on it. So to answer the second part of that person's question, what I love the most and the least about collecting, what I love the most is obviously the community and the cards. I would say I love those two things equally. Like I genuinely love every single Hong Joon card I own. I love them. I love them all. Every single one, no matter how many similar poses, no matter how many similar outfits, like <laughs> I want and I love them all. <laughs> um, I love all 80s cards. Like, I can never, I can never bring myself to sell or trade a card that I don't have a dupe of. Like, if even if I get a set and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna sell the rest of the set, I never do. I never do, unless it's broadcast, because I do like hard limit myself on broadcast because I don't want to get crazy. <laughs> so I really just limit myself to Hongjun broadcasts, a couple of top four sets if they fit into like a layout that I'm doing very specifically, not just willy nilly. <laughs> and then of course, pink hair things, which I may or may not be working on. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> okay? Okay. <laughs> so what I love the least is obviously the scammers. Stop scamming. Like, really? At the end of the day, this is just laminated cardboard. Like, I just don't see how that's worth becoming a terrible person over. Like, you're willing to hurt people for laminated cardboard? Real, actual, physical people? For cardboard? I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm sorry. It's just not that important. Like, if it's truly so important to you, do like Ming Hao said and print it out. Okay? Print it out. Make your own. Okay? Because, like, no. You got to stop. You got to stop with the scams. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> I guess also, like, um, the rampant racism is not great. <laughs> I said that so casually, but like, y'all know, y'all know. It's every other day, every other day. And it's not always, but like 80% of the time, it's always about Black people. And since I am a Black people, you know, hurtful, hurtful to say the least. <laughs> like, could y'all not? <laughs> uh, but like, there's always got to be people that have to feel superior to other people or they can't make it through their day and while yes racism is terrible and obviously it affects me greatly I kind of feel sorry for them that that is what they absolutely need to make it through life they're like if I cannot be better than a person with a different skin tone than me then I am nothing and that honestly makes me so sad and like hurts my heart for them because it's, at the end of the day, I know it's not about me. It's not about my skin tone. It's not about, you know, who I am as a person. It's their own internal struggle and them kind of like acting out. But that being said, don't be racist. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, last up for album cards is my ATs Japanese binder. So this person asked me, is there times where you want to take a break from collecting ATs? Always. <laughs> Always. I feel like although ATs is really, really fun to collect, at least for me, they are also very exhausting to collect. Like almost after every single era, just because I do so, do so much and I like go so hard with my collecting of 80s, I am truly exhausted. Like there are easier eras than other, but truly after every single era, I'm pretty much exhausted and I'm like, okay, I could use a break. <laughs> and like, I do typically just take that break for myself. Sometimes 
like while I'm taking a break, I'll still back collect. Sometimes I'll focus on other groups. Just depends on my mood. Um, but yeah, always, always. <laughs> and then there was, you know, fever epilogue where I just literally didn't collect anything at all in era. Like I didn't even listen to the album. <laughs> it was that bad. Please, please, please take care of your mental health. If you really need a break, just take a break. The cards will always be there. They will always be in circulation. Like we are past the point where it's like, if you don't get it now, it's gone forever. We're past that. There's there's a decent chunk of at and &E now that are buying stuff at all times. It will be in circulation. So <laughs> if you need a break, please take a break. Do not push yourself to that point where you just like disconnect from absolutely everything. Like you can just enjoy the music or you can just enjoy you know, another group or another hobby for a time and you can always come back to it. I put collections on hold all the time and when I feel like going back to it, I do and it's still there and I can always pick up from where I left off. And I think that is the beautiful thing about collecting is that you can always collect something else or you can pause a collection and then you can just start collecting it again. <laughs> People love to watch others back collect, collect an era. Like there's all kinds of ways to collect. And I think that is like truly one of the most beautiful things. So take a break, take a break when you need to. Um, I'll probably be taking a break. If the rumor happens to be true and ATs has a November comeback, I will probably be taking a break and I'm not really going to do too much for it until after my move because that's what I'm going to be focusing on and like I know the cards will still be there like I'll still be able to get the Hong Junes <laughs> in my eternal Hong Jun pursuit <laughs> so yeah I don't think I have been um as overwhelmed as I was with Fever Epilogue but definitely there's been some times where I'm like I am just too mentally exhausted to like deal with this that's kind of why paradigm looks like this which i will also fix probably with fillers um before the like end of year flip through but yeah if i don't feel like collecting something i just won't these cards that i have i got from trades and that is totally fine with me to like slow collect not okay in birthday until I feel like collecting it or not even collect it at all until I feel like collecting it so I take breaks in that way um so that I don't overwhelm myself because 80s at this point they release just like a mad amount of like the sheer quantity of things just <laughs> an insane amount of things at this point that I would definitely burn myself out if I tried to collect everything all at once for as many members as I, I do tend to collect. So yes, I just take my time. I just take my time. Okay, now we're getting into my merch photo cards. I currently have two merch binders although I need to start a third one but that's again neither here nor there so <laughs> but this is all of my merch from their debut up until I want to say stuff that they released in movement era but I can't be sure can't be sure merch is not divided as like cut and dry as my other binders are so <laughs> this person asked me is there any pc you want to get before the new year yes <laughs> yes there's actually just two technically three cards that i am desperately desperately seeking before the end of the year just because i did make um a New Year's resolution that I wanted to collect all of Hong Joon's broadcasts that were not EP 1 and 2 because those ones are impossible. Those ones are impossible. <laughs> well, not impossible, just incredibly expensive and hard to find. Like, so next to impossible. Because, <laughs> like, those ones tend to be, like, 400 to, like, $1,200. And, like, 
yeah so that's a problem for another shy i'm hoping those prices will go down eventually but they probably will just continue to go up and i'll just continue to cry about it but yes if you see specifically these two but also this card i'm doing so much for editing shy i'm so sorry girl <laughs> if you see these three cards please <laughs> please 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 um well caveat i have found two of the cards on mercari japan but they're like 400 dollars, and those are like 200 dollars cards so like they need to quit being crazy but yeah, if you see any of these three cards for $200 or less, please let me know because I will buy them immediately, okay? I will sell my kidney if I need to. I probably shouldn't. I probably need my kidney. I'm already sickly as it is. I don't think I can be out here operating on one kidney. I don't think I should do that, but... <laughs> the equivalent of that without actually having to go to the black market. I want those three cards. They're the last three Hongjun broadcasts that I need to finish my New Year's goal. Um, but I just, I cannot find them anywhere. I have been looking all year. I've been looking all year and I have not seen them pop up um, except for the one person on um, Ricard Japan who has them for like full hundred something dollars and I was like girl you are insane actually you're actually crazy <laughs> and it's not that I can't pay that it's just that I won't pay that so you know take with that what you will <laughs> so this person has asked what's something that you think that anyone that wants to collect PCs should know um it's an expensive hobby it's expensive <laughs> If you are a person who lives on a very tight budget, I don't think you should do this to yourself. I want you to live well. Have a savings account. Have a 401k. Have a brokerage account. Like, do so many other things before you just throw money at laminated cardboard. Like, please, 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 please live well. Um, there's so many collectors on YouTube um, so if there's like a group that you want to see like all the cards assembled, I am so sure. I am so sure that you can find them. Live vicariously. I do the same thing. I don't know why this sleeve is black. I don't know. We'll fix that. We'll fix that. Um, I do the same thing because I obviously can't collect all of the groups that I love um, just because I focus so heavily on AT, so I I take my own advice. I don't collect every group that I would like to collect. I do live vicariously through others that collect who I would like to collect. So yeah, it's expensive. It's so expensive. But if you do decide that this is something that you want to do, please take your time. Don't feel like you need to have everything right away. Collecting is for sure not a race, and. I'm so grateful that like I started out collecting when I did and I was able to collect slowly because we didn't have, you know, five trillion album cards <laughs> uh, like we do now. But yeah, definitely take your time. Um, I'm a person that loves back collecting um, because I like to find things that I want to find and that I'm interested in and so I've kind of been going back to that instead of trying to like keep up with everything as it's coming out I've been kind of just letting something slide and back collecting them and again we have so many Athene now that that is easy to do and in fact I've saved money by doing that because buying fan signs later is so much cheaper than buying into the actual fan sign especially if you're like me and you don't even want to win the fan sign so just let the people that want to win, win, and then buy the cheap cards later. Win, 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 win. Okay, so this is merch binder number two, aka Miss Sakura. We just archived her. <laughs> we just archived her. She's already like, I'm, I'm up, I'm up again. But yes, yeah, so this person asked me, what is my favorite item from each thing you collect for 80s, like favorite PC? favorite album, favorite merch item, such and so forth. So my favorite photo card is and will always be <laughs> my Hongjun Teddy Bear Universe Winners PC. Oh, kind of tied with my Hongjun Gold 
Target car. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Trying to like remember all. I don't know. Those two PCs are tied. I love those two cards so much and for like very different reasons. I swear to God, I don't mean for everything to be crooked in this video. <laughs> oh, so yeah, those two photo cards are like my favorite photo cards. I will never not love them. Both of them mean so very much to me. <laughs> But my favorite album is actually the one that I got most recently. So I recently got a Hongjun signed EP3 Illusion version album. Sorry, my brain is actual oatmeal right now. I'm doing my best. <laughs> I love that so much. Um, Again, Wave Illusion. Illusion was my favorite song for the longest time. It's still my favorite of those two title tracks. I said what I said. <laughs> I'm Team Illusion. Um, but just that Hong Joon look is my favorite Hong Joon look besides the pink hair Hong Joon. That, that shouldn't even be on the scale because pink hair Hong Joon is so immeasurably good that like he's he's not even on the scale. He surpassed it, okay? So like on a normal scale, like on a regular scale where people could actually, you know, reach, <laughs> that Hong Joon is my favorite Hong Joon. Him and his big red coat with the red hair, the blushy cheeks, like I love that it is my favorite era that Hong Joon has ever done as far as like his looks and you know my boy loves good looks I also really love Balmain Hong Joon but that's just like in general but yeah so that signed album just means a whole lot to me because I love that era so much it is my favorite 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 era for my favorite 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 boy <laughs> So I was so happy to get his signed album from that era and it is something I will treasure until the end of my days, which again, could be tomorrow or maybe I'll make it to see my accountant's wrinkle just come across my whole face. <laughs> Don't become an accountant, kids, unless you want an accountant's wrinkle from looking at very concerning things that are probably tax fraud. <laughs> But yeah, so my favorite merch item, ATs has a lot of merch. I'm just like trying to think through all of the merch that I own. And I'm like, there's so much. I think my favorite so far has been the Anities plush dolls. Just because I love the little outfits. <laughs> Okay, playing dress up with my Amy T's dolls. I love it. I love it. I'm gonna buy all the outfits, all the accessories, whether it comes with a photo card or not. Like Jungami, he needs my son. <laughs> That's my child. <laughs> and he needs a full wardrobe. Okay, because I can't have Hong Joon out here looking busted. He can't. Mm -mm. So yeah, I just have like really, really loved the Annie T's plush dolls. And the little outfits, the little characters. We got stickers recently, which are super cute. <laughs> I love it all. I love all of the Annie Tees. Um, I think that's it. Is there any other stuff for ATs? I mean, favorite album musically is still um, Will, Miss William. Love her. I <laughs> love that album so much. From top to bottom, like, we know... Like, it's you. <laughs> Crazy form? Can't be beat. Can't be beat. Love that album so much. So yeah, musically, William. Visually, EP3, Illusion. <laughs> and then Hong Joon, Favorite Boy. I don't know. <laughs> so this person says, hi, ay, 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 ay. <laughs> How are you? Um sick and dying but like alive for now so that seems good i love your vids so 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 much thank you <laughs> i hope this one is up to your expectations <laughs> i know this is like a really weird and somewhat taboo <laughs> concept but i just i just really wanted to know like how much is dead my at's 
collection actually cost. <laughs> oh, I just feel so bad for editing Shy. Oh, God. Right, the next big binder I have is my 12 pocket binder. So this is my AT's archive binder where I put, <laughs> or well, I used to put finished sets, but I have gotten into rearranging my archive binder. <laughs> Truly, I think a collector is never satisfied. Um, but that's the fun thing about photo cards is like, you can always get new ones and rearrange and everything else. So yeah. They're not quite complete sets anymore, but they were complete sets. <laughs> but mostly this was like my um, top four. When my T4A5 would get full, I would archive the sets that I collected in here. And I thought a 12 pocket it was just like perfect for that. So somebody asked me, when did you get into ATs? What made you stand them? Love your YouTube videos, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Again, hope this one lives up to your expectations. <laughs> but yeah, like I said earlier, I did get into them during Hala Hala era. But what made me decide to like actually stand ATs themselves and just, you know, more than just their music was Songhua. <laughs> so Songhua was actually my original bias and it came from this clip. Oh, that's it. I don't know why. <laughs> I just really don't know why. But just seeing Songhua just like in his beautiful smile with Young crushing <laughs> the crap out of this man. Like, I don't know. I was just like, I love this man. I want to know what group he's from. And then it was 80s. And I was like, oh my gosh, I think I've heard of their music. And yeah, I decided to stay in 80s, went down the content hole, never came back out. <laughs> This person asked me, do you use a template to keep track of what PCs goes where? How do you keep track of which PCs you have? So yes, I live and die by templates. <laughs> template makers, I am at their mercy. I love all the template makers. They are all so, so, so great. So yes, I do keep track on templates for things that I want to collect or that I'm working on or anything like that. So for sure, templates. <laughs> I would be actually lost without templates, template makers, the template gods. <laughs> and this person is asking, what is my favorite AT set or top five? So obviously the K-pop store hollow one with Kitty Irhua, that is one of my absolute favorite AT sets. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, it's not a full set because I don't have everybody, but da, 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 da. this page, I know it's not OT8, but I just, I love Christmas so much. I am actually a Christmas elf. And so I love Christmas so much. So these Christmas cards, like half sets, I love them so much. These are my favorite. <laughs> these are my favorite. <laughs> It's this. This are right here. Yes, 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 yes. And then the K-pop store ones. I also really love the Treasure Cafe because it's got my favorite Hongjun look. So this is him with the big red coat and the red hair and the blushy cheeks and the freckles. And they all have like their foot. And if you have all eight of them, it does the like eight makes one team foot thing, you know. So I also love the Treasure Cafe cards, but I don't own full set of that either. Also, these fruit ones, except for Hong Joon doesn't have a fruit. <laughs> it's, it's complicated. It's complicated. <laughs> I 
And this person asks, do you ever feel like you have too much ATs? No hate. I love your collections. Um, do I feel that? No. Is it probably the case? Yes. In fact, I feel like I don't have enough ATs. Because I know of so much ATs that I don't own, <laughs> I just feel like I don't actually have enough ATs. So there's that. And that is the end of this binder. And then the last kind of popish binder is my AP's Chaos binder, Miss Eris. <laughs> So for this, this is where I keep all of the members that are, don't have their own binders. So Yuno, Yosang, San, Mingi, Oyong, and Drongo because Mots have a binder together and then they also have separate binders. And anyway, <laughs> all of these pink Yunos need to go in the pink tease binder. But like then, where what will I fill this page with? You know, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have all of the uh, MMT cards for Wonderland era, but, or all the action, if we're using their government name. <laughs> but I have not put them together, but I think I will do that before the end of the year flip through. But yeah, I just love all of my ATs. Can never have enough ATs. <laughs> and we have Yosangi section. So this person asked me, have you ever had a paranormal experience? Um, I don't fuck with ghosts, <laughs> to be quite blunt. <laughs> I feel like in general, black people tend to be like really superstitious. And like, we kind of don't fuck with magicians either. <laughs> we're not, we're not taking those type of chances in general. Not saying all black people, but like a, a larger percentage than, than not. <laughs> okay, we're not about it. So no, um, I'm not, I will not ever play with a Ouija board. I don't know why little white kids are fine being like, oh, let's contact the spirits. How about let's go the fuck to bed? Like... <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> so, no, I don't I don't mess with the ghosts and the ghosts don't mess with me and that's how I would prefer it to stay. <laughs> Person actually asked me in a video. It says, "Hi shy, love your videos. Thank you." I had a question be and because you are an accountant, I thought you might be the person to ask. I am a student and no no one in the tax profession. <laughs> that's fair. I started selling PCs recently on Mercari and was wondering how tax worked for that. I obviously don't want to commit tax fraud. That's good. Don't commit tax fraud. That's your daily. <laughs> don't commit tax fraud. Don't do it. Uh, but it's also such a small amount of money. I was wondering how all of that worked. I'm pretty sure Mercari said that as long as it's under $600, you don't have to worry about it. But I wasn't sure. I know this is kind of random. <laughs> No worries, girly, I got you. So let me let me kind of explain it. So there's been a lot, uh, well, there's always kind of been, you know, fraud. <laughs> it, it's fraud. So money laundering, to be specific. The specific type of fraud is money laundering with the secondhand market and tax evasion because for the longest time, Unless the website wanted to charge you tax <laughs> or the state required them to charge tax or they had a brick and mortar store, they didn't have to charge tax. So if you ran a purely online store and you lived in a state that didn't have a state tax, you could just sell things tax free. Um, the IRS has since cracked down on that, which I'm sure a lot of you know. So anything you buy online now, you have to pay tax on um, within the U.S., so Korean stores, not really, but yeah. And they're also cracking down on secondary markets such as eBay, Mercari, Poshmark, Depop, all of those, all the secondary markets they're trying to crack down on and even like peer-to-peer -peer selling. 
So PayPal payments as well. Um, and that is why a lot of GOMs stopped taking goods and service was because of this new rule, which they have been trying to roll out for, I am not kidding, the last three years. This rule was supposed to go into effect three years ago, and it still hasn't happened um, because it would be such a large undertaking and the IRS is slow, to say the least. So basically, it used to be if you sold less than $2,000, then you know, all was well and good. You didn't have to report it to the IRS. You didn't have to put it on your return or anything like that. It was just kind of nominal. It was seen as nominal funds. Um, and then anything over that, you're supposed to report it. Fun fact, you're supposed to report all, all income to the IRS, whether legal or illegal. It is literally written that even illegal funds are supposed to be reported to the IRS so, because that was a loophole for the longest time. They were like, oh, well, I couldn't report my money because it wasn't through a legal channel. So then they wrote in that you have to also report your illegal funds, the loopholes that people will find. I swear to God. So basically the same thing was happening where people were going over the 2000 mark but being like oh i didn't know i hit the 2000 and so they weren't reporting it and so there was a lot of money laundering going on especially because people would wire i am not kidding one thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars to people because then they're under the legal limit and they would have like a network of people that they would send this money to <laughs> to launder it of course <laughs> and have it you know be legit but like unreported and stuff and so yeah <laughs> a lot of that was going on so they lowered the threshold to six hundred dollars now um unless you run a business it's unlikely that it's going to affect you or your taxes you just because something is reportable doesn't make it taxable so what they're doing is making it reportable for everybody who hits that 600 threshold limit, but it's not going to be taxable unless you are running a business for the most part. Some people may still get hit with a little bit of tax. It depends on the state because federal level, this is what they're doing. State level varies by state. Texas and Florida don't even have state taxes. So like, yeah, I ain't got to worry if y'all live there. <laughs> um, most states are defaulting to what the federal guidelines are saying, but there are some states that are going to be like, nah, run us our money. And they will charge tax on that amount that's over the $600 threshold. Um, and yeah, it's going to be combined um, cumulative from PayPal, from your Mercari, from your eBay. So it doesn't even matter if you try to sell, you know, 400 on this site and 300 on this site. It's all going to be combined so yeah, <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> but if you're not a business, you're going to be fine. Um, most people's tax rates are so are so low anyway that you really wouldn't even notice. <laughs> it might actually help you in a lot of cases. If you're a person that gets a refund at the end of the year, it would probably help you because it would be considered more earned income. And so you, then you would be eligible for more of the earned income credit, which is a refundable credit. So I really, truly, and honestly would not worry about it. I have a business technically. <laughs> Loopholes. Um, since I saw this coming and I do sell quite a lot since I buy quite a lot, I actually just started an LLC. It's called Shylantis Incorporated LLC. It's not actually a corporation, but I like the sound of it. So I technically run a business called Shylantis Inc. And so all of those payments do go through my business. And of course, I offset that with business expenses, which is all of the K-pop that I buy. And this channel that I run <laughs> is this one giant tax loophole. Yes, but like that's my job is to find the morally gray areas that are not illegal because we're not committing tax fraud, but working within the guidelines to best suit our clients and ourselves. So wouldn't worry about it unless you have a business. If you are a large, large, large volume seller like me, where you have like thousands of dollars worth of transactions at the end of the year, you might look into starting a business. That way you can offset that income by your very real expenses because you can't sell these K-pop items without buying the K-pop albums. You know, you can't sell the pops without buying the albums unless you're getting pops for free somehow, in which case 
I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, those would then, if you run it through a business, then buying those albums would be a legitimate business expense. So I'm not saying <laughs> start K-pop businesses and things like that. But if you are a larger gong, because I know they're also starting to crack down on customs, like what you import in customs is also starting to be cracked down on and they're charging people on that as well. And you might get a form that says, hey, you had this much of income because you reported this much value in stuff you imported in customs. So just saying, I would I would maybe look into that if you are a large volume gom or if you um, sell a lot of your K-pop stuff. But other than that, I would not worry about it. It's really not going to affect you. And in the end, it might actually help you. All right, all right, my last big ATs binder. It is, of course, my Hongjun A4 binder. This is where all of my Hongjun pobs, lucky jaws, fan signs, Japanese benefits, things, things of that nature go. That are not expensive. Well, not super expensive. <laughs> There's a different binder for that. But yes. And asked me what was the easiest era for you to collect it can be album pc wise pub wise etc um so for sure the easiest was fever 2 why because i bought everything <laughs> k-pop is very much a pay to win type of thing so if you're willing to pay you will win <laughs> Fun fact, I did actually technically win a signed album from Fever 2 era, but a friend ended up stealing it. So <laughs> that's fun. She doesn't even like ET. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just still bitter. I'm still bitter. Like, what kind of friend is that? Like, really? Anyway, anyway, anyway. Yeah, that was by far the easiest era to collect. Everything else I kind of back collected. Back collecting treasure even during like fever era was tough. <laughs> it's kind of like, I don't know. I don't want to say impossible because that seems discouraging. But like, it's real, real hard. Real, real hard. Like I've been watching the newer um, AT&E collectors try to back collect treasure era and like they're buying stuff and first of all it is so ridiculously overpriced they're paying like 15 20 dollars for album cards and then their platform album cards and I was like for a platform <laughs> card like what um, but you really can't tell because um, they're buying stuff from like Mercari Japan and overseas and everything like that and so it's just it's tough. It was tough. It was tough for me to back collect treasure when I did decide that I wanted to do OT8 because I had everything for my top three and low key Songwa, but we don't talk about the dark times <laughs> for like the longest time. Um, but then by the time we got to the end of Fever 1, Treasure Era was already, you know, pretty difficult to back collect. And so, yeah, I feel for anybody trying to back collect it now. I wish you all the best. I wish you all the best in the world. And that is it for Hong Jun's A4. Okay, now we're getting into my A5 binders. So this is the only one that I don't have in a Prism Platinum binder <laughs> for now. So this is my, this used to be my Hongjun broadcast binder before I upgraded him, but now this just holds all of his um, Japanese photo things and also this ticket benefit. <laughs> we don't talk about the Park Sung Ho on the back. <laughs> yeah, just like some random small like photos and like this was a dvd benefit i think a japanese dvd benefit maybe or was it the korean benefit i don't know i don't know weird odd random hongjun benefits and official envelope 
apparently. That's all that's in here. My actual expensive postcard binder. We're not gonna flip through all of my larger inclusion binders, but since these ones were A5 size, I was like, okay, sure. So yeah, these are all of my expensive postcards. So these are Hong Joon's broadcast postcards. These were the Tower Record benefits from the very first album, EP1. I have them for San and Yosang for no real reason. <laughs> and then these are Hong Joon's, I think, undisclosed <laughs> broadcast postcards. And then these were the anniversary um, album MMT postcards for my top four. And then I have the Japanese of the same thing for my top four and Ooyong. And then these are Hong Joon's just random Tower Records, S Kawaii winners, um, event postcards, all sorts of things. <laughs> all sorts of just like more expensive postcards that I don't want to put just in my larger inclusion binder. And then their collab with Perrier, or as we call it in the South, Perrier. <laughs> I said it both ways, so now you can't be mad, okay? Um, I have the stickers and I have the flyer from that event, as well as his winner's ticket, this postcard benefit from the pop-up, his work money, another winner's benefit, um broadcast film strip and pop-up entrance ticket thing from Times Square. Yeah, that's that's all I keep in here. This binder really doesn't get, you know, more things very quickly, but that is fine with me. Okay, and these last five binders are just gonna get increasingly more expensive, but they're all my Prism Platinum binders. So this one has my Mott's collection. And this person asked me what was my first ever ATs photo card. So the first one that I like pulled from an album was Hong Joon's Fever 1. I want to say A version. Whatever version had the Inception concept where he's like kneeling in the grass and it's like green behind him and he's making a heart. That one. I remember it specifically. I think it might have been in a video if it was i'll probably try to answer it a clip all right everybody make your guesses now oh i think it's up to now one two three yay i got home june i'm so excited yes sorry for the screaming guys i was really hoping to get him in this style i love it so 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 much i'm sorry editing shy i really just be creating more work for you for no reason like for no reason. I already know you're struggling. <laughs> I'm just out here making it worse. <laughs> oh. But yeah, I also did get pre-order benefits. I ordered from K-Town, but somehow I got Apple Music pre-order benefits. And I still to this day don't know how that happened. <laughs> but I did pull Hong Jin's Apple Music and I think you know and Mingi as well mistaken again if I can if that was on video and I can find it I'll try to enter it but also if I don't please don't blame editing shy she's doing her best <laughs> but yeah this is my new t4a5 I just archived a lot of it so oh my god I forgot about my archive finder we'll go back we'll go back I'll insert that before now so you will have seen that before now but anyway <laughs> <laughs> just know that I forgot it until this moment and so when you saw it previously yeah <laughs> okay and I feel like I said that other binder was my Mott's binder, but that other binder was my T4A5. This is my Mott's binder. Why it doesn't have the Mott's cover, <laughs> I will never know. <laughs> I, let me just change that because I'm out here confusing myself. I was like, wait, didn't I just say this was the Mott's binder? Like I had the option to move this. I had the option to move this the whole time. Why did I not? Okay, now, now this is the Mott's binder. For realsies. Okay. <laughs> Y'all probably noticed that and you're like, um, I don't think that that 
is shine in fact i don't think it is so yeah i just love collecting mods I just love collecting mods. <laughs> that was the end of the story. To me, are, is there any other certification you want to obtain? Favorite pink hair Hong Jun photo card. Okay, so this is gonna this is gonna sound super weird. <laughs> well, obviously, or maybe not obviously, because I I don't know y'all's background. So I do actually need to obtain another credential. I need to get my CPA which is a certified public accountant's license. I do need to do that, but that test is incredibly hard. Like statistically, it is easier to pass the bar exam and become a lawyer than it is to become a CPA. It's that hard. <laughs> Could have been an actuary. Um, but like I am a person who just loves random licenses and credentials. So like I've always wanted to become a notary. <laughs> just, I don't know what I would notarize, but I just really want to be a notary. I know I could, but like, I just don't really have a purpose to do that. <laughs> so I haven't, but I really actually could just like file and become a notary. <laughs> I don't know why I want to hold that credential so bad, but I kind of do. And then also a mortgage loan originator. I really want to become mortgage loan originator. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I don't know why. But it just seems fun to do. To work with mortgage loans. That just seems fun. I don't know. So like if I had to pick, it would be those two things. I would actually if I became a mortgage loan originator, then like I would have the need to be a notary because I would need to notarize those documents, those official documents. I just like that notaries make a documents official. They can turn a regular document into an official document. <laughs> Uh, I can't. I can't. Okay, we're done with this. <laughs>Okay, next up we have my Sunghwa Bunny Binder, the newest one. <laughs> my favorite pink hair boy. None of those pink hair cards are in here though, so like... But yeah, this is my Park Sung Hwa binder where I put all of my Park Sung Hwa's. <laughs> but my favorite pink hair Hong Joon card, I think it's his Apple Music. I don't think I have it in yet. I don't think I do. Like, I know I have it on the way, but I don't think I have it yet. But it's, I'll put it on a picture of it on the screen. Um, his hair is just really vivid, and I, I think the whole set is honestly so cute. But yeah, his Apple Music card, so cute. Love that pink hair, Hong Joon. But I also love his Fever Era pink hair cards, his, like, unintentional pink. Because his hair was, like, red, but it had faded when they went to the Grammy Museum, so it was really pinky. So it was unintentionally pink, but I love it still. So... <laughs> but it's hard for me to pick because I really love all pink hair Hong Junes, and I feel like you know that. <laughs> Just like I love all pink hair Song Hwas, all pink hair Mingis, all pink hair 80s, really. And that is all of my Park Song Hwas in this binder. Then we have Songhua's specific pink hair bunny binder. This is going to become pink tees, but I don't have pink tees in here yet. So it's really still just Park Songhua with pink hair. Yeah. Expensive. It's just this. It's just this. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Technically, there are more cards of him with pink hair, but they're either broadcasts or I have... I have him in an OT8 set, so they're with the OT8 set. So these are just the lone Songhua Pink Care cards that I have currently. So this is my second most expensive binder. <laughs> it is my AT's 
unit card binder. 80s unit cards. Astronomical. <laughs> Astronomical. Even if you get them like from the store in era, you usually have to buy at minimum two, but quite usually like three or four albums to get one unit card. <laughs> so they're expensive whether you buy them after the fact or in era. They're they're just expensive. So yeah. <laughs> How does your husband feel, think about your K-pop collection and love for Hong Joon, etc.? So my husband, obviously, like we've been married for, oh God, <laughs> this is a quiz. <sighs> It'll be eight years soon. <laughs> we, we will have been married for eight years coming January 23rd. Our anniversary is one, two, three, so that we can remember. <laughs> Easy as one, two, three. That's our anniversary. So on January 23rd, um, we will have been married for eight years. <laughs> During that time, like truly, he has seen me in all of like my eccentricities. I am a very eccentric girl. He just knows this about me. Um, and he supports me in everything that I do. Like he supported me when I was in school, both like financially and also like emotionally. Um, I do make more than him now. I am officially the breadwinner of our family. Um, and like he supports me in that. Like I feel like it's been like a thing where men like don't want their wives to make more than them because they feel like emasculated or useless or whatever it is. Uh, they need to work through that. Men need to work through some stuff. But um, no, my husband is not like that at all. Like he loves and supports me in everything that I do. I love my husband so much. <laughs> He's the perfect husband for me. <laughs> Which I guess he should be. Like we have so much fun together. Like he has his own like interests and hobbies. He's more into um, Marvel, both the comics and the cinematic universe. He is really big into... Uh, like gaming games he loves Zelda uh he loves uh Nintendo so we recently bought and played so many hours of Mario Party together so <laughs> so like he truly like supports me and everything he does actually watch some of my videos he'll probably watch this one just because he wants to know how much I've spent <laughs> hey husband hey <laughs> Um, somebody called him my husband. <laughs> he loves it. He loves that nickname. <laughs> so, like, truly, we have so much fun together. Like, even just recounting, like, how long. Because I don't obviously count, like, every single day. Like, okay, today's 934 days that I've been with my husband. I truly forget. But, like, calculating it, you know, because I've been asked looking back at how long we've spent together it feels like no time at all like I don't know I just love my husband so much if you're gonna get married make sure that that person is the perfect person for you they don't have to be perfect in general I'm not perfect my husband's not perfect but we are perfect for each other <laughs> if that makes sense I don't know love him so much he's wonderful <laughs> um but yeah he does not mind he will always like listen to me rant about random k-pop things if i want to weep about kim hong joon like he um stayed up with me when i had my fan calls with hong joon and he was like the first person to like ask me how i was and like console me and we cuddled and i was just like kim hong joon and he was like i know honey i know kim hong joon <laughs> like i don't think he like truly gets it like, he's not a K-poppy, so he doesn't, like, get it. Like, we get it. But, like, he does his absolute darndest to, like, understand me. And he always supports me. He never says anything, like, negative. He defends me from, like, the world. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm sickly. I need a lot of help. I can't drive because I have motion sickness. So, like, he truly takes care of me in every capacity. And I love him so much. Okay, and we have reached the final boss of my 80s binders. 
This is my Hongjun broadcast winner's PC and just generally expensive photo card binder. <laughs> so I'll answer a few questions because I had more questions than I thought I was going to have and I do have the gift of gap. So what's your favorite Yosung card that you have and that you want? Um, Anything with Yosung in a bucket hat. I'm so weak for Yosung in a bucket hat. It's not even it's not even funny. What OTA AT's photo card set took you the most to collect them all? Um, I think it's gonna be the bow photo cards, if I'm being quite honest. <laughs> I'm not even sure if I still want to collect those that I know it's gonna be such a fucking task. But yeah, that I've already collected. Um, probably my MMT, my treasure era MMT photo cards, those took so long. Um, especially that you know, if you know the you know, that you know, it took me years to finally get my hands on that you know. So probably that, but in the future will probably be those bow photo cards. Biggest priority Hong Jun S ISO, th these three, please, please, please. If you see these for under $200, please, or maybe just like a little bit over you know, a little 250, but not 300. 250 is like, mm, hurt my spirit, but I'll do it. 300's a no. Under 200, it's on site. I will buy it immediately. <laughs> so please, if you see these three cards anywhere, anywhere, please, 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 please. Number one wish list AT's photo card right now, still these three. Still these three. Any of these three. All of these three. Any. Please. I am actually begging. <laughs> Is there a Hong Jun that you don't have that is on the top of your list? <laughs> I swear I'm just pressing these in order. It's still these three. <laughs> it is still these three cars. Please, if you see them anywhere, <laughs> can't, cannot beg enough. Like, please, 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 please. Is there anything you regret buying for your collection? Oh, <laughs> that's... I mean, there are certainly cards that I don't love, <laughs> that I don't love as much as other cards. I don't think I would say that I would regret them because at the end of the day, they are still 80s. So yeah, these two, my favorite Hong Joon cards. They're just... They're just too immaculate for words. Like, look at him. I love how it's always him with, like, a reddish hair color that I'm like, this is it. This is my favorite. And, like, of course, everybody knows Jordy was the kindest person on the earth to gift this card to me. To gift this card to me. <laughs> I love Jordy so much. Please check out their channel. It'll be linked below. Um, but, yeah. And then this Hongjun Winners Universe the big bear, the red hair, the blue background, just everything, everything. I love these. I love these two's cards so much. <laughs> I still have not decided on the pink pages or not, but <laughs> oh, somebody asked, what is the most expensive PC I own? It is actually this one. So this winner's universe photo card was $400. This one was $420. <laughs> These two right here is $820. I'm laughing because it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But this card, um, both of these cards, there are only 10 of them on the earth. This one might be. I think they're both 10. I think they're both one of 10 cards. There is another one. This is a Japanese quiz winner's photo card so there is another one that there was only five of I have not even seen that one for sale but if I do it's on site it's on site I don't care if it's six hundred dollars the other one of this it's on site I will get it <laughs> but yeah so this is technically my most expensive photo card I own but honestly like just both of these both of these <laughs> Okay, so somebody is wanting advice for back collecting older eras. Okay, honestly, the best thing you can do and what's probably going to be the most economical thing to do, follow all the 18E. Follow all the 18E because 
so many of like my AT&T AT Mutuals I have seen like put older stuff up for sale either because they're changing how they collect or who they collect or what they collect so if you follow like really prominent at &E collectors you are bound to find older stuff that you are missing I know I have older stuff that like I need to put up for sale or trade it or do something that I just have um and like I usually tend to just gift it to people if I know that they need it <laughs> Like, I get gifted so many things, so I feel like it's the least that I can do is, like, help others if, I, if I'm if i able to. So, that's what I've been doing. Um, it's just gifting people that I know need it. But, yeah, a lot of us will put stuff up for sale and it'll be reasonable because we'll just put it up for sale for what we paid for it. And since we got it, like, in era or around that era, it's not nearly as expensive as the people who are just scalping just scalping out here at this point. <laughs> ah, I love this page so much. It's not complete yet, but like, I love this page so much. I love it, I love it, I love it. Oh, and Superstar. Oh, that's gonna be, that's gonna be a task. That's gonna be a task. At least the cards aren't like crazy expensive. They seem to be about like 20 to $30 each. So not crazy expensive. It's just hunting them all down. That's gonna be an issue. And then we have our broadcast tickets. I just love these. I think they're so cute and so cool. Like little tickets, love them, love them. And then we have our little random things back here. <laughs> they just back here just chilling out okay and with that that is my entire 80s photo card collection so, so with that being said this is how much my entire AT's collection cost me. Is it a lot? Is it over 10k? <laughs> I feel like that's a dumb question to ask. It has to be. It has to be. I just don't think it's under 10k at all. <laughs> Could have bought a car. Um, if it's under 20k, I'm proud of myself. If it's over 20k, we need to re-examine our life. Uh, <laughs> So this is Shy from the future while you are watching me weigh all of my binders. So I want it. This is, oh my God. I did not think it was going to be $78,000. <laughs> I didn't. I really didn't. So like, but honestly, like looking back, that is about right because it breaks down to a yearly average of $15,674.40. And yeah, I spend about $1,000 on ATs a month. So that's like $12,000. And then when I splurge and buy incredibly expensive cards, yeah, that adds up. That, yeah, mathematically, I can see how I had gotten to where I am currently. Um, <laughs> I wanted to quantify this data a little bit more and just kind of like put it out there that like I literally just calculated this for fun. It's not to like encourage people to have my spending habits. Um, I am definitely like very financially secure. I have, you know, not only my income, but my husband's income. We have a well stock savings. We both have 401ks. We both have different like individual retirement accounts. Like we're, <laughs> we're okay. I feel like somebody's going to be concerned for me. And like, I'm really, really, really okay. <laughs> so I just wanted to like put that out there. Oh, and I also wanted to put it out there um, what numbers I used. So because I do like funnel a lot of this through my business, I do keep like meticulous receipts of everything because you're supposed to keep tax data for like seven years. So like I, I do actually have all of the receipts for this. So that's how I was able to make this video. Um, however, I will say that anything that I got in a go... I just used the 
median price. So for any pobs that I got in a go, I just used a flat price of $15 since that's about um, the amount that the albums are when they're converted and everything like that. Sometimes it's a little more, sometimes it's a little less, but I just used the average. Also, any cards that were given to me as a gift, I did not include because obviously I did not pay for those. Um, and I know a lot of my collection is actually like worth more if I resold it, but I wanted to make this just like an honest depiction of what I paid, not what it would sell for now, if that makes sense, because the number would be <laughs> quite a bit higher if I put it like at quote unquote market value for a lot of these things. So all of my pops in my fever binder, especially for fever two, um, I just marked them all at $15. Um, I also did not include shipping in any of this. So if I, if I added the cost of what I pay for shipping in a year, oh, good God. Um, it would be so much astronomically higher. So I really just wanted like the price of the card itself, not any shipping, not any like EMS, no proxy fees, like nothing like that. Just like the base price of the card as if I had like bought it in Korea, which obviously I didn't do for most of these things. But yes, so I just wanted to preface all of this data by saying these are the uh what went into these calculations because I wanted it to be the most honest true depiction of what I paid for my collection I hope that makes sense but yeah <laughs> that's all I have for you guys for this one I hope you had such a wonderful beautiful ATs day and until the next time I make ridiculous spending choices 